Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. This sermon is going to be called The True Heart of Giving. Let's pray. Father, I praise you for what you're about to do and what you have already done, God. You are gracious. You are just loving. Fill our hearts today with you. And Lord Jesus, I pray that through this sermon, people will get healed, set free, delivered, Father. I pray that you will show yourself strong today in this room, to this, this room. Fill this office with your spirit and your love and your grace. And today, God, speak to me, speak through me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys, um, I'm going to talk today about the true heart of giving. Um, the church I attend online is called Elevation Church. And today, um, they're, they're having their year-end offering. Some churches do it at the beginning and some churches do it at the end. Um... And the Lord, I was thinking about this, and the Lord wants me to talk about the true heart of giving. Um, giving is not something that we have to do. It's something we get to do. Um, and I'm, when I say giving here, I'm talking about tithing, although offering is really... But, Although tithing and off offering most times in most churches and most Christian circles represents money. Yeah, it doesn't have to represent money. All although we churches need money to survive and everything, but biblically it's what it's whatever was precious to them. So in those days, they they did have currency, but it wasn't uh, precious to them. It wasn't as precious to them as it is to us. So they would have to carry their um, oxes and goats and bullocks to sacrifice to the Lord because... Um, that was, um, and then the blood would be, be spilled in their sacrifice. But because of the cross, we don't have to sacrifice that anymore because the ultimate blood was sacrificed. So instead, today, uh, we, we uh, say give one-tenth or ten percent of your yearly earnings to the Lord because the Lord knows that money means a lot to us. Um, and anybody who says it doesn't <laughs> um, is lying to themselves. And, um, but although money means a lot to us, it shouldn't rule us. See, the love of money, money is not the root of all e either, <laughs> all evil, but the love or the, 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 the putting of mo money before everything else is the root of all evil. The placement of money in your life is the root of all e evil. Money is a tool, just like everything else is a tool. Just like the internet is a tool. It, and tools are neither good or bad, it just depends on how you use them. And um, the reason why we give our money back to God is to show to show him there is nothing in my life that you can't have 
there is nothing in my life that is not yours. Like, we're saying, here's the most valuable thing to me. Uh, so, I am going to give it to you because I want to show you that there is nothing um, that you have given me that is not yours. And as well, for me at least, I, I know, as I said before, churches are ex expensive and everything is going up. And um, the church that I attend does a lot for um, the, the, their community stateside. And as well here, we have in, in Mississauga, which is about an hour away from where I live, uh, we have a branch of Elevation Church, and they do a lot for the city. So I give, give because of that reason, too, and because I know that they need to pay their bills and do all that practical stuff as well. And I, I'm eating there, so I'm going to give there. When I say I'm eating, I mean I listen to the preaching every every week and, and worship and all that stuff. Um, but what what I mean when I mean the true heart of giving, giving is less about the amount and more about the heart behind it. So so you could give one tenth or ten percent of your yearly income and it not mean anything to you. It means just like you're paying another bill like you would pay for Rogers or Bell. This is your tithing bill that you give. Um, but the, but the Lord wants people today not only to give their 10% or over and above or whatever, but to have a true heart of giving, to know why they're giving, um, not just to give it because it's like a Rogers bill <laughs> or a telephone bill that you pay every month or every two weeks. The Lord, the Lord wants us to remember why we give, to have a reason or a heart behind our giving. He doesn't just want us to like um, give because we feel we have to or it's an obligation. He wants us to give joyfully. And he just doesn't want us to give our money. He wants us to give our time, our resources, our talents. So if you give your money, that's great. But what about your talent? What about your time? How much time are you giving to the Lord? How much of your talent are you giving to the Lord? How much are your time and talent are you giving to other people um, that is a part part of it too and if we if we just keep time tithing at oh I have to give one tenth or I have to give this much over above like you're paying a bill that's not the right heart uh, the Lord said if you want if you want to feel that way, keep your money. If you feel that way, if you if your tithing is like paying a bill, like something you have to do, he said, keep your money. I don't want it. Okay, Lord. He says he's calling it dirty money, but it's the heart behind your giving. It's like you're saying, Lord, here is my, pre here is my, um, uh, a precious resource to me, and I'm giving it back to you out of gratefulness, out of thankfulness. 
that is the true heart of giving. And if you're just giving because the pastor says, uh, give one tenth, or it's, it's biblical to do that, and it is, but we need to get our heart, hearts right and stop thinking that it's a, it's a telephone bill or some kind of bill where you have to pay every month when the Lord does not want to want it to be like that. The Lord wants us to give cheerfully, not only of our time, but of our money, our, but, but no, the Lord wants to give uh, us to give cheerfully, not only of our money, but of our time, our talents, our resources. Um, so if you are um, giving in a sense of obligation, the Lord says keep it. <laughs> um, but if you are giving of your time and of your talent, the Lord says go ahead. The, Lord's, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And when I first um, wrote Pictures of Silver, I gave the galley pages, which, which are the first pages of the first chapter um, on the altar. I put it on the altar. That's just to say, Lord, this book is yours, this novel is yours. And unfortunately, I didn't do that with my other novels because at that time, I, I didn't go to a church when I was writing the other novels. But if I was going to a church, I would have given the galley pages on the altar. It was just saying to God, um, this book is yours wherever you take it as yours and it's about giving myself and my life and my talents and my time to God. So the Lord wants not only people to give this season because it's Christmas, but what is the heart behind your giving? Are you giving a gift because it's tradition? Are you giving a gift because you feel obligated? Or are you giving because you want to show your love, you want to show your appreciation, you want to show your thanks? A lot of the pressure of Christmas, I believe, is people give out of obligation. People uh, give out of they, they think that they need to give. But change your heart of change your heart as as it uh, revolves around giving or ask God to help you change your heart rather as it comes to giving ask ask God to help you see what the people around you really need do they need love do they need respect do they need care do, do they need something tangible? Pray, I would say pray about every single Christmas gift you're giving and pray about why you're giving it. And if it's not pure motives, ask the Lord to change your heart around your giving because he wants, to, wants people to give from a pure heart and a right heart today not out of obligation or some kind of religious religious thing, but he wants people to give because he gave. That's why we that's why we give gifts because in this time of year he gave the greatest gift of them all and that that's his son Jesus, which he then sent to die on the cross and shed his blood for our sins just so that we so so that we might live but so that we wouldn't have to um, do the bullocks and goats so that we could just 
sacrifice ourselves so that we can, we don't have to become a, we don't have to give a physical sacrifice but he wants ourselves as a sacrifice in the word he says a living Paul says a living sacrifice so that's the kind of giving that he wants today if I don't do another sermon before the holidays have a very, very blessed and Merry Christmas and ha- happy holidays to you for all for all my other friends out there. Um, we don't celebrate Christmas. Um, happy holidays and God bless. And for those of us who do celebrate Christmas, have a very Merry Christmas. Bye. Gather near to us once more. The years we all will be together if the Lord allows. Hang a shining star upon the highest. And have yourself a merry little Christmas tonight. Merry Christmas, you guys. I'm I'm going to take a few weeks off, hopefully, if the Lord doesn't have anything for me to say next week or the week after. If I don't do another sermon, have a very Merry Christmas. We'll talk soon. Bye. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays.